Welcome to an intro to Java FX, building a trivial FTP client. Now we've finished writing our TFTP client and we have installed our TFTP server. Now it's time to take it for a spin. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. I have started my SolarWinds TFTP server and as you can see it's saying it's, um, it's started and it's listing on UDP port 69. So that's all ready. Now, SolarWinds, when it installs, it will um, create a directory called something like TFTP server, it's TFTP root, and that's where files will be sent or where you can get files down. So I've placed some files in my TFTP root folder that this server can use to send to the client and any files we get from the client will turn up here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to run our TFTP client from Eclipse, but the first thing you need to understand is I'm using Eclipse IDE. So Eclipse IDE has a, has a thing called a workspace, and in that workspace each of your projects has a folder, and that forms the root of your, your application. So if we have a look at mine, as you can see here, I've got my my binary folder, which will have all my classes in it. I've got my source folder that's got all my .java files in it. There's a .project and .class path that Eclipse uses to work out um, how to present your project. And I've got one file here that I've added in, which is four space sims .xlsx, which I'm going to use to send to my TFTP server. So when you run this from an IDE, you need to know where the root of your application is going to be because that's where it's going to take files from and put files into. However, let's load up Eclipse and just run our application. Okay, and now I'll just put the, set the folders back on top. So, because I'm running this all on one machine, I can address my server using 127.0.0.1, which is the loopback IP number. And I'm going to get a file, and I'm going to get an ASCII file, and I'll get 4.txt, F-O-U-R.txt, and press the button. So, you can see on the TFTP server that it's received a net ASCII get request for a file called 4.txt and it's completed sending it. We can see in the dialog status that it's got transfer complete and deleting temporary files so it thinks from there it's done it and then over here we can see 4.txt has turned up in that folder there and what I recommend is if you're unsure which folder your client is using Pull a file down off the server onto your client and then go and search for it and find out where it is. And wherever it's gone, that's going to be the folder that you're going to be using for your client application. So we've done that. I'm just going to clear this now and we're going to send a file up. So I'll do 127.0.0.1. We will put the file. Um, I'll send a binary file because um, it's not text. There we are, and I will press that. And again, TFTP server, it's received a binary put request for four space sims.xlsx, and it's completed that, and the file has turned up down there. Now, in both of these tests, things have worked fine. But UDP isn't a guaranteed transmission method. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in, I'll put in 10.10.10.5 and I'll request a file binary there. Now there is no server with that IP number on my network and 10. Dot, and, and the 10. Dot, um, 
IP range is an internal network range. It's not a public IP number, so there's no chance of anybody out there having one, having an IP number of that range. What I'll do is I'll press the button, and you'll see this will fail. Um, but it will demonstrate what happens if you can't send successfully send a message to the server. It takes a while, but here's what you get. Error, socket, timeout, waiting for server. We sent a message to the server and then we went to have a listen for the server's response. There is no TFTP server at that address, so the message we sent has got lost, and that's what you see. You'll also see a, um, in your IDE, you'll also see a, a um, stack trace dump, and you'll be able to see this last line here from the code we've cooked, we've coded engine.java. If I click on that, you can see it's trying to receive something from the server. It's trying to read something from the server and it's timed out. And that's because the packet got lost or there's no server there. So there you are. There's our client up and running and working. Um, and you can run it on two machines. It's obviously easier for me to show you it just all running on one machine. Um, if you run it on another machine, you will need to know the IP number of that other machine and you'll need to make sure that none of your um, firewalls um, are stopping traffic getting through and also that there is actually a route from one machine to the other. But that's it. Any questions, drop me a note. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed the course. Thanks for following to the end.